What would happen if we took this and fused it with this? Not how I would have drawn it up, but okay. Today, we'll be jumping into Pokemon Fuse Dimensions, a ROM hack with over 200 fusions of Pokemon from every generation. The story of this game is exactly the same as Fire Red, but shiny odds have been boosted all the way to 1 in 400, so I think we all know where this is going. But I'm not just gonna beat this game with shiny Pokemon. That's been done before. I'm gonna do what nobody thought could be done and beat a Pokemon Fuse Dimensions Hardcore Nuzlocke with only shiny fire types. Here's a quick look at the rules for this challenge, and they'll be down in the description if you'd like to look back at them. Before jumping in, I want to know, if you could fuse any two Pokemon, what would they be? I can't wait to see all the cool combos you guys come up with in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you smash that like button, and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more. With all that said, let's get into it. I named myself Blaze and my rival Torrent to really get into the spirit of things. Once it's time to get our starter, we're obviously going with Raltmander, which is actually a fusion of my two favorite types, Fire and Psychic. I'm not going to be nicknaming our starter because I have to shiny hunt it, but I actually get the shiny on my fifth reset, so that took no time at all. Not only that, but he's also modest, which is awesome. Now we have to fight Torrent and his Squiron, which is a water steel type, so we don't stand much of a chance here. Good thing a Nuzlocke doesn't start until you get Pokeballs. We can get our first encounter on Route 22, so it's time for a hunt. We'll be looking for Fenerin, the Fennekin Nidoran female fusion, which is a fire poison type. In the 10 minutes it took to find a shiny, I actually ran into the shiny form of every other Pokemon on the route, so I figured I'd show them off too. My favorite of the bunch is probably Electran with that blue and black color scheme. Anyway, we eventually run into shiny Fenerin, and after securing the catch, I name him Chemist. He's the only fire type we can get before Pewter City, so we'll be taking Brock on with this squad of two. He opens with Lit Dude, which is the greatest name of all time. I can't wait to add one to our team. Raltmander is able to take the Fire Rock down with two confusions while all it does is use Defense Curl. Next is Gian Edge, who we Ember for around 60% as it hits back hard with Rollout. We managed to take it out with another, but we only have about half our health left for Brock's Ace Solonix. We actually land our first Hypnosis and the Psychic Rock stays asleep through three Drain Kisses, giving us the win. I was fully expecting my starter to evolve at 16, but sadly that won't be happening until 18. Thanks, Ralts. Oh, by the way, any trainer's Pokemon also have a 1 in 400 chance of being shiny, so after Chemist KOs this shiny Weebra, he evolves into Brigzina. Now we make it to Mount Moon and can catch a lit dude of our own. He has the same color scheme as our Raltmander, which is a cool light blue and yellow. I have the perfect name for this guy. I mean, what else can you call a lit dude? After we beat the last trainer in Mount Moon, Raltmander hits 18 and evolves into Kermelian. Honestly, as much as I love the typing, I wish this fusion line looked cooler. Outside of Cerulean City, I grind the team up on some wild Kabukate and at level 18 decide to take on Torrent. His lead is a Hurtier Clefairy fusion with Intimidate, so pretty tough to deal with. After Chemist hits a Psybeam, the normal Fairy type uses Workup, but its boosted tackle only does 12 damage. A third Psybeam KOs our rival's lead, and next up is Saitata, who's part water. Psybeam does over half its health, but a crit water pulse brings Chemist down to 16 HP. Since we outspeed, we're able to KO the fusion with one more Psybeam, and Torrent sends out his Squiron. My only chance of beating this thing without losing Amon is to bring Kermelian in who gets hit by Water Pulse for exactly half his HP and he also gets confused. All I can do is click Hypnosis and as we break through confusion the 60% accurate move connects. We snap out next turn and start firing Psybeams off into the Water Steel type. Our second one confuses him and after a crit one last Psybeam from Kermelian finishes Torrent's starter before it could even wake up. Last is Cactabra who survives Fire Fang with a few hit points but after a flinch we clean this battle up with a Drain Kiss. We make our way through Nugget Bridge and get to Bill's house and he's still just a Clefairy? If there are regular Pokemon in this game then who's creating these fusions? I was under the impression that they were all naturally occurring but I guess not. Let's not think too hard on it. Time for Misty. By the way, I'm showing off an older version of this game from my playthrough, so if you've seen a more recent video of Fuse Dimensions, you might notice some differences. Misty leads Dwebder, which is part bug, so it doesn't resist Fire Fang. 
What I didn't factor in was that both Dwebble and Shelter have great defense. Water Gun doesn't do too much and then I switched to the special attack Psybeam, Beam which gets the first KO. Her ace Farracuda is a fighting water type so after Aqua Jet I Drain Kiss but the bird lives on one. Misty's Super Potion just isn't enough to bring it back to full health as our next fairy move drops the bird and gets us badge number two. That fight was a lot easier than I was expecting. Between here and the SSN, nothing of note happens, so let's see how our next fight with Torrent goes. His Her Fairy is shiny this time around, and after bulk up, it does manage to hit Chemist with the super effective stored power for decent damage. We still take the Fairy Dog down with three side beams, and Cactabra comes in. A crit flame charge one-shots the Psychic Bug and gives Chemist a nice little speed boost. We're also able to take Cytata down the same way as last time, so we're in pretty good shape for the now evolved Wartron. I swap Kermelian in whose special defense is now high enough to make Water Pulse a 3 shot. We manage to land our first Hypnosis again which is huge. I bring in Party Animal since he has the super effective dig which does around 40%. Next turn Wartron fires off a 4 times effective Water Pulse but Sturdy has current game properties so Lit Dude can always take one hit from full. Even though he got confused, our Rocky Boy manages to connect Dig and bring Torrent's last Pokemon into the red. Now it just takes a swap to Kermelian who eats Rapid Spin and finishes this thing off with a Psybe. I don't know if I can keep getting sleep luck in these rival battles though. We rub the captain for the Cut HM and move on to take down Surge. His lead is the Fighting Electric type Tim Kid so Kermelian is able to one tap it with Psybe. Next is the Shiny Manacrino but the Poison type dies to the same. Rylossum is next so I Fire Fang the Grass type for 40% and get a burn. Now I swap to Break Xena as Surge uses a full heal. We outspeed and a single flame charge picks up this knockout leaving the lieutenant with only his ace Rye Plume. Thanks to that flame charge we outspeed the poison type and get a critical hit side beam to do around 70% of its health. Thunder Punch hits us for 33 HP but one more side beam drops the second Raichu fusion so that's badge number 3. Next we backtrack through Cerulean to the dreaded rock tunnel. It's funny, I've been playing Fire Red since it came out and I still haven't memorized how to get through here. Eventually I find the exit and in Lavender Town I can finally give our starter a nickname, Sci-Fi. You get it? Like science fiction, but he's also a psychic fire tie- yeah I'll stop talking. On Route 8 we can add another member to the squad and there are actually two fire types here, Volpua and Laranat. We end up with Shiny Laranat who's a fusion of Larvesta and Venonat. I really don't feel like grinding right now, so I'll get him up to speed later. Maybe. In Celadon City, I go to the roof of the apartment complex to get what I was anticipating to be an Eve Tom, which is an Eevee Rotom fusion, but it's actually Medinja, the Alonlin Marowak Shedinja combo. This Pokemon is about to haunt me. My last save is somewhere in Rock Tunnel, and I am not resetting to there. I decide to accept that this one isn't shiny because I can catch a cube Kata in Lavender Tower later and get Medinja when it evolves. Good plan, right? We'll get back to that. For now, it's time to battle Erica. She leads Lily Tails, who stun spores turn one and gets a full power on Chemist. Next turn, after a four times resisted Magical Leaf, we flame charge, which just comes up short of a kill. I guess we low rolled since after Erica's Hyper Potion, another flame charge takes the fox down. Doug turn hits the field, but I'm not nervous as we just use another flame charge for a knockout. Last is Jinzakot, who also uses a 4 times resisted move, but we get paralyzed. Next turn, Charm means flame charge won't do too much damage, so after connecting, I bring Sci Fi into a Giga Drain. We get outsped and sunk to sleep, then a crit Giga Drain brings us fairly low. Good news for us is that Kermelian wakes up and fires off Flamethrower for the win. No way we were about to lose to the Grass Gym. Before going into Rocket Hideout, I backtrack to Rock Tunnel to catch a few more lit dudes because they have a 20% chance of holding a Link Cable, which we'll need later on. With that out of the way, we blow through the grunts and it's time to take on Giovanni. He leads with a Dignia who ingrains and survives Ember from Lit Dude. After a weak Needle Arm, the Cactus Mole goes down to a second Ember. Next is Marajask and I decide to start stacking Rollout. The third hit kills the ground bug as it hit a few not very effective headbutts and a fury cutter. Last is Metshrew who hits a takedown for 10 damage and misses its next as our last two rollouts bring it below 50%. After a second miss we use a super effective ember to beat the crime boss. Love a nice party animal solo. 
Now that we have the Sylph Sculpt, we can return to Lavender Tower and battle our rival. We take her fairy and Cacdabra out the same way as usual, and then Torrent sends in his newly evolved Golkate. Chemist sets up Light Screen, and after a Water Pulse, ends up getting confused, so I swap to Sci-Fi, who eats Zen Headbutt. After Drain Kiss brings us back to full health, we're hit with Assurance for good damage. That's fine, since we can continue to get some health back each turn and damage Golkate until it goes down. Believe it or not, when Wartron comes in, we land another Hypnosis and then take the starter down with a critical hit neutral flamethrower. Torrent also has a Volpua now, but it just takes two Drain Kisses to get the kill and that's it for this battle. We use the Sylph Scope to see the Ghost blocking the staircase and it actually ends up being a Sir Skewda. The bird goes for Dive as I have Kermelian set up Reflect on turn 1. After surviving with 12 HP, we Drain Kiss the Fighting type for half its health. We can't live another attack, so I swap into Chemist, who takes the next dive and brings Sir Skewda down to a few hit points with Psybeat. Now I have to swap to Lit Dude, and good thing he's got Sturdy because Dive is 4 times effective on him. With just 1 HP left, Party Animal connects a Rock Tomb to take the bird down. That was a full team effort. As a nice surprise, while doing some grinding, Kermelian hit level 33 and evolved into its final form, Gardazard. After about 30 minutes of hunting, which is a lot for this game, I finally catch a shiny Cube Keda so I can get the shiny Medinja. Then Mr. Fuji brings me back to his house where he gives me the Pokey Flute and the Mega Ring. Time for the next installment of the Medinja Misfortunes. At level 24, Cube Keda evolves and as I check my party, I still have an open slot where I was expecting a shiny Medinja. It wasn't easy grinding this bad Pokemon and to not get rewarded for it was tough. Is this just an issue in the version I'm playing, or can you also not get Medinja in the current patch? If you have the answer, please let me know. To make matters worse, this is the point in Gen 1 that always bothered me. The level cap jumps to 43, so now I need to do an incredible amount of grinding before taking on my rival in Sylphco. I delayed Lit Dude's evolution by a level so he'd get Earthquake early, and at level 34 he evolves into Lampler. Then I slap a link cable on him to immediately bring the rock to its final form, Chandelem. Braxena also gets to level 36 where he evolves into Delqueen, but there's a big issue here. In this version of the game, there was an error with Delqueen's coding, so its base stats actually went back to the same as when it was a Fenerin. Had I known this before starting the challenge, I would have just gotten the most recent patch. Since this was out of my control, I decided I could get two Safari Zone encounters instead of just one as a consolation for all the time I lost grinding. My first shiny fire type is Chimsprout, which means we'll have that cursed Monferbel soon. What a fitting name for a plant on fire. The other two options I can encounter here are Pidchick and Score Jr. I'd prefer Pidchick since it has a mega form, but the first shiny we end up finding is Score Jr., so he'll be joining the team. I also catch a few Ralt Manders, since similarly to Lit Dude and the Link Cable, they have a chance to hold the Gardazardite so we can Mega Evolve. Now it's time for another big grinding sesh to get Mista and Ah up to snuff. Since you won't be seeing the middle evolutions in battle, let's take a look at when the base forms evolve. I don't know why, but I love the name Mr. Boot, and I really like the shiny form. Monferbell on the other hand, absolute nightmare fuel. If you thought it couldn't get more ridiculous, then think again. I'd like you to meet Infurbell. No questions at this time. Mr. Boot also evolves into Mr. Race, which isn't as cool, but he does learn Ice Punch and Blaze Kick on Evolution, which makes up for it. With the team at level 40, I decide it's time to take on Torrent with a much tougher team of his own. His Herfairy is now a Stout Fable, and after Infurbell uses Nasty Plot, we get hit with Crunch. We get our special attack to plus 4, and a crit crunch lowers our defense, so now we're forced to attack. Even with our boosts, Acid isn't enough to kill the fairy, as it brings Ah down to 10 HP. We drop the dog, and then KO Torrent's shiny Beedrazam with Flame Wheel. Golkade is next, which gives us a great opportunity to soak up some HP and get a knockout with Giga Drain. His Ace Blastron can't stand up to a plus 4 Giga Drain either, and then his Volpua dies to Acid. As much hate as I gave this Pokemon, it's really pulling its weight. That moment of victory is cut short as the Sylph employee spits in my face by giving me another Cube Keda. I actually couldn't believe that this thing came back again. Absolutely painful. I throw it in the trash and barge in to save the president from Giovanni. 
Mista takes a sucker punch from his Doug turn before knocking it, Dig Growth, and Marajask out with ice punches. His last Pokemon is still Metru, and even though it takes two Blaze Kicks to get the kill, the Steel Ground type can't do any serious damage with Slash. I decide to take on Koga before Sabrina since Gardazard will be able to deal with Poison types pretty handedly. We open against his Wheeze Mecho by Mega Evolving and setting up Calm Mind. Look at how little damage Sludge Bomb does. I use a second and then for some reason click the not very effective Drain Kiss before knocking out the ninja's lead with Psybeam. Then his Muckerel and Apple King both die to Psybeams and on the level up to 42 we learn Psychic which we use to finish off Wii's Conda. So like I thought, very easy gym. Since I can use Surf now I decide to get our 5th team member before Sabrina. In the power plant I find this super cool Electabuzz Girder fusion. I can't use it but I just wanted to mention that it's a thing. Coincidentally, immediately after I run into shiny Eve Tom. Fusing Eevee and Rotom is such a cool idea since they both have multiple different typings when they evolve or change form. There are actually two fire types to choose from here. If you give Eve Tom a Fire Stone, you get Heteon, the Fire Psychic Rotom Heat Espeon fusion. Since I already have Gardazard, I decide to go with a Sunstone to get Fanion, the Fire Flying Rotom Fan Flareon fusion. They literally just slapped a fan on Flareon's head. Ridiculous. After another session of Verse Seeker grinding, it was finally time to take on Sabrina. She leads with a shiny Karapno as I send out Gardazard. After an immediate Mega Evolve, we trade Calm Minds and Iron Defenses until Sabrina hits a big crunch. Plus 3 Drain Kiss gets a one shot though and basically brings us back to full health. Her Ace Beedrazam goes down to Flamethrower, Tentazong dies to a crit, and her last Pokemon Bravey Army also gets torched by a crit Flamethrower. I don't think anything is stopping us at this point. In the Pokemon Mansion, we catch what I was hoping would be our final team member, Volpua. This is probably my favorite shiny in the whole game. The blue and black is so cool. Unfortunately, this one has color change as its ability and basically never having stab on its moves is really bad. I decide to keep Dark Light in the box and then at level 47 challenge Blaine. He leads Hedeon and I send out Chandelem. The Psychic Fire type hits a Psybeam before going down to a Rock Tomb from our big guy. Next is his Ace Pidgeokin and I realize it's actually level 46 instead of 47. I was following the regular Fire Red level caps here and Blaine usually has a level 47 Arcanine, but whatever, the one level wouldn't have made a difference here. Party Animal survives Water Gun and gets another KO under his belt with a 4 times effective Rock Tomb. Blaine's last two Pokemon Fear Cargo and Abomar get dropped by the same so that's the 7th badge. I won't go over anything in the Sevi Islands, but I do just want to mention that I catch a shiny Abomar of my own who will be our final team member. After giving Flash Freeze a link cable, he evolves into Abba Mortar, the Mega Abama Snow Mag Mortar Fusion. This thing's base stats are huge. It's basically like I have a static Mega alongside my Mega Gardasard. With the team complete, I can take on Giovanni for the last time as the 8th gym leader. I lead Mr. Race against his Doug turn and start by bulking up as the ground type uses Sandstorm. I set up two more times before getting hit by Dig, which coupled with sand damage brings Mista into the yellow. At plus three, the crit on Ice Punch is really just overkill as the Rocket Ball sends out a shiny Dig growth. Ice Punch's KO the Light Green Boy and Marajask as Giovanni sends in his Ace Meta Slash. A plus 3 blaze kick destroys this thing but Wistar 4 times resists all my moves so I swap into Infurbell who eats an EQ and picks up the win with Leaf Blade. With all 8 badges we can head to the Pokemon League but not before our battle with Torrent on Route 22. A matchup we're already familiar with, it's Stout Fable vs Infurbell. After 2 nasty plots and tanking 2 takedowns I kill with Giga Drain to get back to over 100 health. Beedrazam's Poison Jab doesn't do too much damage, but unfortunately we do end up poisoned from it. After the bug goes down to Flamethrower, Torrent sends in a Crocodon, which is a Croconaw Rhydon fusion. A 4 times effective Giga Drain drops the Water Rock type and gives us some much needed healing for Blastron. Giga Drain isn't enough to KO the starter, but we do get the recovery necessary to survive Hydro Pump and Poison damage. Another Giga Drain takes the Armored Turtle down, and with 6 HP left, I finally swap out to Chandelem. Rock Tomb takes the Prevo down, and then our rival's last Pokemon, Jinzakot, hits an Energy Ball and gets dropped by Flamethrower. 
After making quick work of Victory Road, we finally arrive at the league. Here's a look at the final team before we enter. I didn't want to get everyone to the same level as the champions ace since that would make things too easy so I settled on 58 which is the third member's highest. With that said, let's take on Lorelei. We start things off with a Mr. Ray's ditto but mine's shiny so it's better. We bulk up turn 1 as Lorelei misses blaze kick. Next turn brick break isn't strong enough to get the kill and we get confused by teeter dance. Since I don't want to hit myself at plus 1 attack, I decide to bring in Chandelem who eats blaze kick. Psychic doesn't do much either and we take the lead down with an Earthquake. Sabe Slash is next but we outspeed for a critical hit Stone Edge which drops the Ice Ghost type. Her next Pokemon is Snortic which could be a problem but Party Animal gets another crit to KO, this time with an Overheat. Frost King is next which I think has a really cool sprite. Anyway, Earthquake doesn't do much and after a Psychic hits pretty hard I decide to swap into Gardazard who's met by Hail. After Mega Evolving, I go for Drain Kiss, but the Psychic Ice Fusion just hangs on. It hits a not very effective Psychic, and knowing Lorelei is going to heal, I use Calm Mind. Next turn I set up again, and now Psychic only does 10 damage. At plus 2, I decimate the penultimate Pokemon with Flamethrower, and then her Ace Globro comes in. This Water Ice Mega Evolution is absolutely terrifying, but my Calm Minds end up paying off as a single Flamethrower gets the kill and our first Elite Four victory. Bruno is next and his lead is Brelsect against Sci-Fi. I immediately Mega Evolve and Calm Mind as we're hit with a non-crit slash. Turn 2 goes the same way and then we obliterate Bruno's lead with Flamethrower. Shiny Aramidable is next up, and as cool as this Pokemon is, it can't stand up to a plus 2 critical hit flamethrower. Lycanchan and Boldchoke go down to a Drain Kiss and a Psychic, which leaves Bruno with his Ace, the other Charizard fusion Galazard, and his is also Shiny. He Mega Evolves and I have to say the red flames and accents are super cool, but since this version is a fighting type, it doesn't stand a chance against my plus 2 Psychic. 2 members down, 3 to go. Now it's time to face off against Agatha and her ghost types. First up is Duskon 2 which is probably the bulkiest creation of all time. I sunny day with short circuit as the normal ghost uses curse. Now I swap to flash freeze completely forgetting it has snow warning so there goes my sun. And shadow ball gets the spadef drop to make things worse. I ice punch and you can see how little damage we do as the mummy recovers up to 75%. Flamethrower seems to do a bit more damage, but another Shadow Ball does half the health we have left, so I need to swap. I bring in Chandelim, but Shadow Ball gets the drop again. Too scared to stay in, I go to Mista, but another recover could be trouble. I bulk up three times while being hit by a Shadow Ball, and then Agatha tries Will-O-Wisping my fire type. Twice. I Blaze Kick, but even at plus three, it's not enough for a kill, and of course we see another recover from the Dusclops P2 fusion. After hail damage, another blaze kick finally gets the kill, and now we're in pretty good shape with a plus 3 mod on the field. Or we would be if Medinja didn't have Wonder Guard. This Pokemon really needed to mess with me one last time, didn't it? I go back to Party Animal here who soaks up a thrash and then outspeeds for a Stone Edge kill. Now we're faced with Agatha's ace, Geninja, the water ghost type. I don't have a safe switch in, so as the Ninja Mega evolves, it's time to sack off Short Circuit. You didn't see much action, but your sacrifice is still appreciated. With that I get a free swap to Inferbell who lands a crit Giga Drain through Geninja's double team for a one shot. The evolved form of Duskon 2, Duskon Z, is next, but I'm not afraid. Oz sets up Nasty Plot as Shadow Ball hits for around half our health. Giga Drain brings the Mon to the red as Tri-Attack does just a few more hit points than we healed. Hail can't bring this thing down so Agatha gets to use a full restore as we Giga Drain again. After a second full restore, Inferbell crits a flamethrower to get the kill. Is it just me or have we crit a lot so far in the Elite Four? Mr. Grigus is last and after surviving our Giga Drain it hits a hefty psychic which also lowers our special defense. I swap to Mr. Race who's brought to half the health he has left by psychic. This is no problem though since Agatha is out of heals and we outspeed for an Ice Punch win. After finally losing our first Pokemon, I wonder if the last two battles will be harder. Let's see how Lance goes. The Dragon Master leads Huntutor which is a Grass Dragon type with Intimidate. Pretty good. I Mega Evolve Gardazard in Calm Mind as an Aqua Tail almost one-shots us. 
At plus one, the super effective Drain Kiss is able to take the dragon down and bring us back to half health. Next, the water dragon Intellite also gets outsped and dropped by Drain Kiss. Crobaria is a poison dragon, so instead of the neutral Drain Kiss, I'm able to take this fusion down with Psychic. Flap Pro has the same typing, so another Psychic gets the job done, leaving Lance with only his ace, the last starter Venagard. And this one is shiny. It also Mega Evolves and we hit a Drain Kiss which does exactly 50%. Outrage fires back hard, but since we outspeed we can Drain Kiss one last time for the knockout. Gardasard is really proving to be an Elite 4 killer. I think if I wanted to I could have soloed with it. With the 4 members down, the only thing standing between us and the Hall of Fame is Torrent, and we know how things start here. I get 3 nasty plots off as Stout Fable Cosmic Powers twice and hits a takedown for about half our health. Acid only does around 50% and after another Cosmic Power I switch to Giga Drain which crits for the kill and heals back some HP. Beedrazam is next who only gets off a Future Sight before being KO'd by a plus 6 Flamethrower. Next is the Water Rock Feralier so we have no trouble taking it down with a single Giga Drain, also getting us back to full health. His Ace Blastron Mega Evolves but my luck hasn't run dry as we get another crit with Flamethrower to one shot the starter. Now Ninetark comes in and I'm not sure if Acid kills but decide not to risk it so I switch to Chandelam as the Fire Dark type nasty plots. That turn was wasted since Night Slash is physical and then we destroy the Fox with Stone Edge. Last is Jinzakot but Cotton Guard won't save her as I use the special overheat to knock it out and secure the victory. And there you have it. With only one death we were able to beat a monotype hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Fuse Dimensions. The sprites in this game are seriously good and if you haven't checked it out yet, I highly recommend playing. I know in the current version of the game, Sabrina, Blaine, and Giovanni's aces are all megas but I honestly don't think it would have made a difference in our battles. I think fusion hacks are some of the coolest and this one was even better because of the boosted shiny odds. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you want to see more. Also let me know if you want me to play other fusion games. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.